going back to the recruiting, this crossed my mind while you were running down the various targets and uh, commitment dates and everything that's going down at this point. And Oklahoma, of course, had a banner month of July. Was there a lot of speculation that this program would take a hit in recruiting with the transition of Lincoln Riley to Brent Venables? And then there was just this I, I can't really necessarily pin down where I heard this, whether this was coming from fans or I saw this out there somewhere because I certainly didn't have a an opinion on it because I didn't know. I wanted to see it play out. Um, that, that Brent Venables would not recruit on Lincoln Riley's level. That, that this program was going to take some type of a, a minor hit, not tumble, out of sight, but that it just wouldn't be as strong in recruiting. And it seems that maybe the recruiting is even better. I know the, the jury's still out and the class has yet to be signed. Yeah, Mark, I think, you know, I think there's, there's been the narrative in a, in a couple of different ways. One is just kind of play on the field. Number two, it obviously our one, a one B, um, is recruiting. And so I think the play on the field is, I think there's the assumption that this Oklahoma offense is going to take a little bit of a step back and, um, you know, go down um, in terms of the quality um, of, you know, of the play on the offensive side of the ball. Um, so I think, you know, and then from a recruiting perspective, I think the, the narrative was really more so, okay, um, Oklahoma, was a dynamite offensive recruiting you know they got tons of you know great players at the skill positions on the offensive side of the ball under riley but maybe the defense lagged behind a little bit in recruiting so i think so number one i think there was the assumption that hey this might probably this, this might look the same but just on the opposite side you know venables will be a really good recruiter on the defensive side of the ball but maybe not quite as much um <coughs> excuse me um offensively and so I think – and then I think what compounded that a little bit is OU's kind of lack of success, so to speak, early on. I think holistically, I know this was the – this was always the design, and this has been Venable's design, design, you know, year in and year out at, at Clemson um, is, you know, that they typically will get more – they don't do a to whole lot early, but they'll get more of these these commitments and things like that. And um, you know, in July and August and, and, and later on in the in, in the year. So I think those things kind of compounded. Mark kind of t took that to that new to the new level. But I think by and large, right now, I think they've answered um, they they've answered those questions right. So when you look at the offensive side of the ball, they've got Jackson Arnold, five star number number 16 overall player in the in the country um jacoy's pet away um four star number 55 nationally number nine ranked wide receiver you got caden green offensive tackle the highest ranked offensive lineman that oklahoma has got over under um under bill Beatonbow. um and then so when you when you look at those they've got a couple of really highly rated um running backs as well and so you know what They've got three running backs in the top 50, just top 50 running backs in the country. So I think um, when you look at this, you know, I think there a lot of people underestimate um, the the recruiting abilities of, of DeMarco Murray, of Kale Gundy, of Jeff Levy, of Bill Biedenbow. And so I think um, Oklahoma's knocked it out of the water. Brent Vendables and staff has knocked it out of the water. And then you're seeing what you kind of expected, maybe not necessarily um, day one or year one in terms of recruiting on the defensive side of the ball. But here's a here's a prime example of – and I saw this. I don't remember or I give credit to where I where I saw this, but um, – and it might have been Parker, one, something I was listening to from him. He said the, the since they've really been measuring it, the most Oklahoma has got in a single recruiting class – is three top 100 overall kids and one single right now 
Um, I don't know how many they have right now, but you know, if, if you know, I could look, um, look at this, um, let's see, they've got four, I think they've got four right now, four or five top hundred, top 100 players overall. But some of these kids and Makari Vickers and Peyton Bowen and Jacoby Johnson, um, and Jordan Raynaud and, um, uh, Dasuli Akana, um, if they if if they get these guys and not only um, when when you when you think of DJ Hicks as well, if they get these guys, Oklahoma's going to have anywhere between ten and eleven top one hundred guys, and they've only gotten three at, at any other time. So, yeah, I think the narrative that um, Oklahoma's recruiting was not going to um, was was not going to be as good. Um, under Venables is, you know, obviously it's it's not holding water. And I think, <coughs> excuse me, and I think o- overall, Mark, I mean, I think it's a, a little bit, especially on the defensive side, it's a little bit silly just to think that the the recruiting is going to go down. Um, you know, he was, you know, one of the best, obviously defensive coordinators in the country for, for years and years and years. But one of the best recruiters at, at that level, and you've got you've got him, and you've got Bates, who is um, just an outstanding defensive line coach, and even maybe even a better recruiter. Um, and then you, you've got the dynamic that this staff has. So um, you know we'll we'll see how things obviously play out on the field in terms of you know what this season looks like for Oklahoma versus last year um, um, under Lincoln Riley, specifically on the on the offensive side of the ball, but I think they're very clearly the the, the mantra or the chip on the shoulder that these that these guys have on both sides of the ball. I think the offensive guys are are very they they hear that, and part of their motivation has been to prove to everyone, maybe not necessarily themselves, but just to everyone outside um, in the country that hey, this is a t- this is a team that can be really really good offensively without Lincoln Riley. And I think defensively heard this a little bit in the media availability um, on Tuesday was that they're, they're sick and tired of being the reason that Oklahoma is not winning championships. And so I think they've got that, that, that motivation there knowing that they feel historically and internally, like they're the, they're the reason why as a group overall, not, individually but they're the reason why um this team hasn't really taken that next step so we'll see how that goes um you know in in year one i think it's a lot and certainly we'll get the predictions at some point here in the next few weeks but you know it's the challenge is you know how do you get a 40 percent new roster to come together and play well you know as a cohesive unit um on, on both sides of the ball, but I think, you know, they've got the coaching, they've got the guys there that I think they, they like and a team that can certainly challenge for a, for a championship this year, maybe not nationally, but obviously um, at the conference level. Tim, good to see you. Our USC fan, Tim, who typically stirs up the chat a bit. Um, Jason had uh, addressed this earlier. I don't want to put words in Jason's mouth, but basically Jason ran down the number of targets, the guys that are in play over the next several months for OU and with the number six recruiting class right now, just felt that if they get their fair share, especially of a number that are leaning Oklahoma appear to be headed toward Norman, that it could be a top five class and maybe top three to four. Yeah, no, you're you're right, Mark, and I, I do think this has the opportunity to be um, top three. If they get if Oklahoma gets Hicks, I think yes, this is a top three um, class. But the guys, you know, the guys that I just you know laid out there a few minutes ago, um, I think are all right now leaning Oklahoma. Some are very very heavy leans, and some are are slight leans. The three announcements that are coming in. Um, you know, that are coming in the month of August with, um, as you look at Jacoby Johnson, Makari Vickers, um, and Anthony Evans, I think all three of those are four stars. All three of those are very, very highly likely Oklahoma. Um, and then as you go forward, you've got DJ Hicks, which is a five-star. you got Jordan Raynaud at the defensive lineman, who's another four-star. Um, Tasuli Akana uh, 
edge um, guy out of Utah is a is a four star. Um, and then if they're able to flip, you know, Peyton Bowen, Ryan Yates, again, a couple of four stars. So, yeah, I mean, if all of those things fall into place, top three, I think, you know, if you if they miss out on a couple, uh, you're still probably looking top five. Um, worst case scenario, I think this will be a top 10 class, but I think they're somewhere in the four to five neighborhood right now. To put a cap on our secondary conversation, I don't know if Jason's got another poll under his sleeve there for the secondary, but this is looking back at uh, our last position unit uh, review, which was uh, linebacker. And so that's where the poll stands right now. We've got uh, who will be the most productive linebacker for OU this season and 879 votes in. We appreciate that with, uh, uh, Danny Stutzman with a huge lead over the field, Jason. Yeah, again, not incredibly surprising. Uh, just on, I think he's coming coming into camp. They look like looks like um, Danny Stutzman is, is probably that um, that guy that could 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 jump up and be the best linebacker, um, you know, on this team. A little bit surprised with um, Aguebu being. 19%, but he has made a significant change to, to his body um, to, to, to get him into a position where he, what, to where he needs to be. So wouldn't be surprised, you know, kind of coming in, I would, you know, I would maybe just from experience lean on Deshaun White just a little bit, but um, yeah, I think, you know, all of these besides Jaron, Jaron Koenig um, has, it's going to be counted on to, to, to play a very significant role in this defense at the linebacker position. So, um, yeah, I think it'll be, um, I think it'll be very, very interesting to see how that, how that goes. But yeah, David Guevu is another guy that's kind of showed flashes, but has never really um, consistently been the guy that they need them need him to be. 